So essentially what will happen is that we're going to call the winners in alphabetical order by their family name. And um, for each student who will receive a plaque, I'll just hold this up so you all see the plaque. You may receive a plaque like this that says Tri-Valley Retired Educator Scholarship. Then it will say the person's name. The first one is Hannah. Hannah, how do you say your last name? Borjan. Borjan. Yeah. Thank you. Did I get it right? Yeah. Borjan. Um, and then it says 2016. Then at the bottom it will say either in honor of or in memory of one of our members. Um, and, and that will just grow as we go along. So I'm going to start out by calling, um, excuse me, uh, Joanna, I mean Hannah, come on over. And uh, Elda. So Elda Montgomery is going to speak in honor of Joanna Larson. Shock Joanna. Um, this plaque is given in the honor of Joanna Larson, a retired teacher from East Avenue Middle School in Livermore. And I first met Joanna in 1981 when I arrived at East Avenue to teach after being sort of sent there because of teacher and attendance, that type of thing. I uh, knew Joanna's voice long before I ever knew Joanna. <laughs> now I'll tell you why, how I knew her voice. Her PE classes exercised on the black top outside my classroom door. <laughs> and <laughs> so I got to know her voice really well. She was also the leadership teacher, so she was always involved in the social activities of the school. And I often wondered where she got her energy to commute from Walnut Creek. She uh, taught the leadership classes, so she was darting about the halls all day. And of course, uh, with PE and leadership, she should have been tired out. But then she wanted to exercise after school <laughs> about three days a week. Right, Joanna? <laughs> and she didn't like taking no for an answer. And maybe that's why we're here today, Joanna. <laughs> we got all that exercise. Uh, when Joanna retired in 2001, uh, she continued to be very active uh, on her homeowner's board in Walnut Creek. Uh, she worked with her political party. She traveled. She went to A's games. She had, still exercised and she went to work for our retired teachers group. Now she has collected the money for our lunches. She's recorded the choices we made and uh, I think you helped with finding the caterers too, didn't you? I thought, I thought you did. Now, uh, she, uh, I'll, I'll back up here. Uh, when I first came into the group, we're sort of like the bow weevil. We were always looking for a home. This group was moving from place to place. Where are we going to meet? You know, that type of thing. And she is the one that found this wonderful room. So we are very thankful to her. So, in honor of Joanna, Hannah, I present you this flag. Thank you so much. And I'll put this in there so I can shake your hand. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank and you. good luck. Thank you. Yeah. It's fun being a teacher. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Good, good. good. Um, first off, I want to introduce myself. My name is Hannah Borjon, and I want to thank you guys all so incredibly much for inviting me here today and for providing me with, a with such a generous scholarship to aid me in pursuing my dream of being a teacher. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, my dream has never changed and it's never been a question. Um, 
I come from a family with several teachers in it, and I see how valuable their work is. My grandpa, David Borjon, is a retired teacher, and he taught everything from drama and art to being the football coach at Kelseyville High School. My mom, Sarah Borjon, um, has taught in Livermore for 21 years. These 21 years have, consi have consisted of mostly teaching third and fourth grade. Seeing these two amazing influences in my own life transform and touch the hearts of other kids has inspired me to do the same one day. With help and support from my family and all the amazing teachers that I personally have been so fortunate enough to have had, I turn that inspiration into motivation to work hard and get good grades to make my dream a reality. I am overjoyed to announce that I will officially be a liberal studies major at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo this coming fall. Cal Poly has won over my heart for many reasons. One of the reasons I chose this school is their motto, Learn by Doing. At Cal Poly, they take this motto very literally, and students are able to get hands-on work experience in their field their first year. Because Cal Poly requires you to declare your major on your application, I'll be able to start classes for my liberal studies major my first year on campus. After getting my liberal studies degree, I will be applying to credential programs and work my, towards my K-8 credential and possibly my administrative credential. You know, being a teacher takes a, takes a special type of person. Being a teacher is much more than just spitting out facts and making tests on them. It's being a person who cares, nurtures, and looks to bring out the best qualities in each child they encounter. It is being a person who helps each child grow and take that one step closer to the person that they eventually want to become. It is being a person who encourages their dreams and expands their knowledge and understanding of how and why this big world works. Teachers create the future adults who will one day take on this world. Teachers are so important. But of course, I'm sure you all know this, <laughs> you yourselves are all this special type of people and have so much more firsthand experience of the miracles teachers and administrators make happen every single day. And I'm just so excited to have my own turn. So thank you all so much for helping me make this dream a reality. Thank you. This scholarship is given in Doris Batten's name, and um, with this scholarship, we honor Doris Batten, a retired teacher from the Dublin School District. Doris was one of the founding members of her scholarship program. She was a secretary for many years and kept meticulous accounts of meetings. She took part in the process of getting nonprofit status for our scholarship organization. By looking into the requirements and going through the complicated maze of applications, on January 26, 2000, Doris and Bill Cosby signed the Articles of Incorporation as a nonprofit or non organization, and our scholarship program was born. At that time, the scholarships were for $500. Until a recent illness, Doris contributed significantly to making the operation of the scholarship fund run smoothly. She is still interested in all we do, and we wish her well, and we hope she gets this. Um, tape and sees it and enjoys it, okay? And Cora, she was my kindergarten class. So this is a really, really special, special day. Um, I know you're gonna be wonderful, and you were wonderful as a kindergartner. So, <laughs> and this is, this is for you. I just want to say thank you again to my kindergarten teacher. <laughs> I love you still. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, thank you so much for inviting me here today to eat this awesome lunch um, and just visit with you guys and see what this club is all about. So thank you. 
um, and especially for the huge scholarship. I'm so excited to receive this, and I know all the other recipients are too, so thank you so much. Um, a little bit about me, my name again is Corey Campbell. Um, I'm at Granada right now, and I will be attending St. Mary's College in, uh, of California uh, this upcoming fall. And I will be in their teaching program, and it's called TFT, which stands for Teachers for Tomorrow. And alongside of that, I'll be minoring in Spanish. And I've always had this passion for the language of Spanish, and I know all of you do too, right? Yeah, <laughs> awesome, great. <laughs> um, but I'll be doing that, and um, it was about a year ago that I really discovered this passion that I had for teaching. Um, and I had the opportunity to volunteer in an elementary school class at Junction Avenue K-3 school. Um, and I was really able to witness the impact that not only the teacher there in the class had on the students, but also my, me working with them. And um, the impact that I made working with them really made me realize that I want to have this experience every day and I want this to be my job. This is essentially my dream career. And um, being able to receive this award is a step in turning my dream into reality. So thank you all so much for this award. I'm so grateful to receive this. Thank you. so they know what it says? Yeah. Uh, we are oh. requested. I thought I already said that. Okay, yeah, yeah. the plaque says Tri-Valley Retired Educator Scholarship. Then it says the student's name. In this case, it's Tommy Her Hers? Hertz. Hertz. Mm -hmm. Okay, without the T. Without the T. Yeah. <laughs> um, 2016, and then at the bottom, it, this one happens to be in honor of one of our other founding members, Alma Heaton. And so that's what the plaque looks like. Okay, so Sheila. Hi. Alma Heaton, my gosh, what a joy it is to have you here. And, and what an honor it is to present to Tommy. <laughs> well, yeah, quite a while. <laughs> anyway, um, we can roll the clock back to um, about 1970, and that was the year that the Cooper family moved to, um, to Livermore and became part of the Rincon family. Alma Heaton was already an important part of our school district, and as a resource specialist at Rincon, um, I have many very happy memories of dropping in at Rincon and the many Rincon parties that there were and barbecues and social events. A wonderfully, wonderfully cohesive and social class. I think that you and Walt Capri had a little something, a very special spark that ignited um, Rincon School. So after 20 years after that uh, important 1970 time, um, Alma has, has shared with so many of the schools in, in um, Livermore, her skills, her caring, um, her, her sense of what's important in, in education. Um, and then the next part of your life, Alma, you just never seem to stop um, when you decided to retire and then you became a part of the Retired Teachers Group. However, Having to travel all the way to Castro Valley or other places was not what you folks had in mind. And so Alma and some other uh, retired teachers uh, decided they were tired of driving that far and got busy in starting the, the Tri-Valley uh, branch of the uh, Cal RTA. Uh, Alma, Juanita Bjorklund, and uh, Mary Everett were important um, impetus for the Tri-Valley uh, Retired Teachers Association group. Um, they started, they had to, you had, you had to have 70 people, right, to have a charter, Alma, and so by hook or by crook, the three of you got those 70 people to get the charter started. One year later, membership had grown to 108. By 1995, there were 160 members. 
So the, the seeds that you sowed <laughs> in those early years really came to, um, to fruition. There were many phone calls that we all yes. made. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and as you may have heard from one of the other presentations, the, the various locations that the, this division of Cal RTA has met in sort of has the history of restaurants that opened and closed in the Tri-Valley. As I looked at the list of them, I, about half of them I said, oh yeah, I remember when that one closed. I remember when that closed. They were at the Willow Tree, the Pleasanton Gardens Community Center, the Holiday Inn in Livermore, which is still uh, still there, Marie Callender's, the Emperor's Garden, Pedro's, Girasole, Basil Leaf, the list goes on and on. And you did a lot of traveling from place to place. Yeah. Yes. Well, and it was a very diverse menu that you chose as you went from restaurant um, to restaurant. The very first day of the teacher was during Alma's presidency in 1992, and a very, very special 10th anniversary of our division of Cal RTA was held at Castlewood um, in Pleasanton in the year 2000. As a retired uh, special education teacher, Alma's creative thinking and use of resources um, in diverse topics at membership meetings. I read the list and I thought, my goodness, where did you come up with all these great, great presentations? There's a car and a driver. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Um, scams on seniors, one-room schoolhouses in California, elder hostel, bonsai, Dr. John Shirley's unforgettable presentation of memories of his army tour. Um, of true of dirty duty in Europe, and scholarships, as I mentioned, were a really important part from the very beginning. And fundraisers were ambitious, creative, varied. Book sales, and all these things came from Alma's days. You know, the fifty-fifty drawings, goodie baskets, and the very first scholarship during your presidency to uh, Virginia Nixon. And the Laser Forum, which is now the, what is our name now? Second recess. Second recess, that's right. I'm on my third recess, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, and that newsletter also grew as Alma took very special care in making sure that it was well written and that it was mailed out appropriately, and, and she really did take um, a lot of care of that. And with the aid of Chuck Hazen, he... Right. There that yeah, Alma and Chuck were a tremendous duo uh, in in the work of the newsletter because I came along a little bit later and I thought, boy, this is really well organized, and so the work that you did mattered a great a great deal. Um, always welcoming new prospective new mem members. I got to be one of those in two thousand and three, and it was a joy to see Alma after quite a few years um, that, since the Rincon days. By February 2013, membership grew to 391 members, and as you know, and I tell you every meeting, we're hovering at 400, <laughs> and we'll be right over that very soon. Thank you, Alma, for your leadership, your inspiration, these 26 plus years. And it's a joy to introduce Tommy Hertz. Yes, I got it. Hertz, exactly. Congratulations. Thank you. Right, welcome. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And then, I kind of give it to Alma. All right, so it's an honor to present the Tri Valley Retired Educator Scholarship 2016 um, to Tommy Hintz in honor of Alma Heaton. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, got a uh, uh, uh. All right, got it. Cool. All right, so uh, throughout my time in high school, I was never really sure of what I wanted to do after I graduated. I was always one of those students who, for one week, would want to be an actor, and then the next week, I wanted to be an archaeologist, um, kind of during my Indiana Jones phase. And to be honest, deciding on what I wanted to truly do with my life was terrifying. I went so badly to love what I want to do and not to make the wrong choice. And over the last few years, I grew to love working with kids. And currently, a lot of what I do, extracurricular-wise and everything, um, involves working with kids. I mean, at heart, I'm kind of 10 years old anyway, so I guess it fits. <laughs> yeah. uh, so becoming a teacher never really hit me until about last summer when I had kind of an epiphany. 
Uh, every summer, I coach swim team. Pleasant Tomatoes Sharks, go Sharks, woo! Uh, and it is a blast. It's my absolute favorite thing to do over the summer. I coached uh, six and unders uh, for two years, and then last year I coached nine and ten year olds. And it's indescribable. It's a blast. It's the, my favorite experience of my whole life so far. Um, but uh, while on deck, while coaching, um, one day I was talking to one of the parents, and she said, have you ever thought about becoming a teacher? And I said, oh, no. And then she was like, oh, okay. And then the next day I was like, oh. Actually, I kind of want to do that. So I started thinking more and more about it. And then in September, I started applying to colleges as an education major. Um, and how I really knew that teaching is what I want to do is because of the excitement that I felt when I really decided, yeah, this is what I want to do. It was something that I hadn't felt before. Like, this is, I'm more confident than ever. This is what I want to do. And I'm more than thrilled to be, get that letter saying, we, uh, you've been accepted to, as a undeclared education major. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Um, at UC Santa Cruz. So that's where I will be going next year. Um, and every single time I talk about this, I get more and more excited. Uh, I want to become a teacher because, in my opinion, teachers are those who influence you the most. Um, I can't remember a teacher that I have, has not influenced me in some way. A few notables being Mrs. Brazil, Mrs. Dean, Mrs. Prasad, and he was uh, here earlier but had a meeting, Mr. Hansen, uh, among many, many others. I guess I want to join the group of people, uh, this group of people, you guys, uh, to influence others at the way you all have influenced me. And who knows, maybe one day I'll be sitting in this room as well with you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys sound like a very, very fun group. Thank you. So, in conclusion, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this amazing honor. I had no idea I would be getting a plaque until I got an email saying, how would your name want to be spelled on a plaque? I'm like, I get a plaque? Whoa, this is so cool. Um, and when I got the call that I had won, I couldn't stop smiling for the rest of the day. I was like, in the days. Uh, so just thank you from the bottom of my heart. This means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Shorter than you. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> right. um, the next up is Taylor Lawson, and this um, plaque uh, it reads the same way I've said for the others, and but it's in memory of Sandy Harvey. And um, so, are you ready? Marsha Rank is going to speak in memory of Sandy Harvey. How many of you actually knew Sandy Harvey very well? A lot, a lot of people, yes. Amazing lady, amazing lady, yes. Sandy Harvey was a teacher in the Livermore School District. She was an extraordinarily talented woman who was a classroom teacher and a science resource specialist at several elementary schools. She chaired the annual Symphony Guild concert for several years. She worked as a docent at Sunnowell Regional Park, where she led groups of elementary school students on informative tours of the park, during which she pointed out local flora and fauna and told them history about the Native Americans that lived in the area. Our organization sends treats to all schools in the Tri-Valley Day of the Teacher. Sandy took on that challenging task for several years. Somehow, she also found time to become a prize-winning quilter who made quilts for needy infants, wounded warriors, and women who lived in local havens. Her quilts have been displayed at the fairgrounds and in some local libraries. Sandy and I were roommates for many years when we first started teaching, and we enjoyed sharing teaching ideas and traveling in the summer. And you teachers will find out when you travel in the summer, 
There are always kinds of things to bring back to your classroom. <laughs> Sandy is deeply missed by all of us who knew her well. Congratulations, David. school right now. Um, I would like to thank the retired educators for this generous scholarship. Thank you so much. I'd like to congratulate the other winners because this is really cool. Um, <laughs> um, I decided to be a teacher because I really liked learning. Um, I was one of those weird kids that always um, didn't spark know anything and read all the books and just wanted to read the textbooks just for fun. Um, <laughs> um, and um, I wanted to, to share this learning with other people. Um, uh, my, I have a little sister, and whenever I'd learn something at school, I'd always go home and tell her all about it and teach her what I learned in science or the, the history lesson that I learned. Um, and for the defining times in our lives, when we're children and young adults, um, after our teachers, the most influential people in our lives, did I say teachers? I meant parents. <laughs> so after teachers, the most influential people... Did I say teachers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking a lot about teachers right now. <laughs> it's on the mind. Um, so third term's a charm. After parents, <laughs> the most influential people in our lives are our teachers. Um, if you ask any adult who their favorite teacher was, I'm sure they can tell some a story about how they helped them develop into the person that they are today. Um, and I want to be able to have that impact on people. Um, after graduating high school, I will be attending Biola University. Um, I will major in English and minor in History and Biblical Studies. Um, they have a really great teaching program and due to the AP classes that I've taken, I'm hoping that I can graduate in three years and then get started on my teaching credential then. Um, and then maybe pursue a master's in either English or education. Love to see. Um, <laughs> by becoming a teacher, I will be able to share the love I have for learning and make a difference in the same way that my teachers have made a difference in my life. Um, I know that I'm ready to pursue a career in teaching and I'm excited to see what the future brings. Thank you all so much. One thing to the winners before uh, we start to depart. Um, this um, Granada High School winners will need to give back to me the plaque today because when it's your senior awards ceremony, um, I or somebody else will be there to give your plaque to you for keeps. Okay? <laughs> um, all right, so last we have is Sarah Steele. And this plaque is in memory of Dr. Robert L. Cosby, the son of Bill Cosby, one of our founding members of this organization. First, all the uh, scholarship winners. Uh, there's a little paper that was passed out about the teacher. This teacher was a teacher in my high school, and I graduated from Eugene High School in uh, Oregon in 1945, and I'm wearing my yearbook picture, <laughs> which is given, we had a reunion. A year ago this June, we had our 70th high school reunion, and uh, I'm thinking maybe that's the last one. <laughs> few people there, but um, one of the things when you, you read about this um, lady uh, who died, I didn't, ha I didn't have the privilege of being a, a student, but you can see that there's some eternal truth in being a teacher. There are some things that you're going to do in your life that are going to affect children that were true 70 years ago, they're still true today. 
Now I'd like to go about our son, Dr. Robert Cosby. My son was a medical doctor. He had a terrible disease called cystic fibrosis. It destroys the lungs. On the 1st of December, uh, 1998, um, he 